We are not a corny family. We're the corn god family circle. We're cousins who come from all around. We're the corn god family circle. I'm looking at the lyrics here. She, she the lyrics. I'm looking. Is that the same thing? Oh, I skipped the. Uh, you did. That's okay. That's okay. I'm That's okay. sorry. We'll do that last verse and then we'll do the chorus. Right. So it's the Uncle Urkel one. Keep working on it. Welcome to year number 59 of the Corninga Family Circle. And you who are here are part of maintaining a tradition that is going to continue into its 60th year next year. Alan, use the mic. Wow. We got a big crowd here. So this is the... Uh, the the last year before the 60th, next year is the 60th. We've got Danny who's filming this. It's going to go on to Ustream at some point. So for years and years to come, or as soon as you finish, you can rush home. <laughs> and you can watch. You can say, I was there. And you look for yourselves in the show. You look for yourselves in the meeting. Um, so it's my job to host this, uh, this annual meeting. I'm excited that you're all here. And I'm excited that my family's all here too. Uh, and we'll start, I guess, just with the traditional routine of, uh, of making sure we have our historian's report. Looking over at uh, Jeff, who's not only the the, uh, the real the real president behind the scenes, but also the parliamentarian, the historian, the person who makes sure all decisions get made. Uh, so he's going to give a historian's report. Then we've got some time for just the joyful happiness that uh, that goes along with uh, being a part of the family every year. And we'll kind of celebrate some of those simchas, those good happiness. And then uh, I think that'll be kind of pretty much it for our, uh, our annual meeting. We'll get to the historian's report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Isn't he a great president? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as Alan said, this is our 59th year. And this year we had 39 people here, which is a pretty good crowd. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Next year, which Alan said will be our 60th year, I think our goal should be to have six, at least 60 cousins here next year. So all of you, talk to everybody you know that's related in one way or another and tell them to come next year. All right, my, tre my treasurer, that's another job that I do at, back home. Uh, my uh, historian's report. My cousin Ron Berger, who is Roger's older brother, who lives in Amsterdam, and some of you have visited him in Amsterdam, decided to take a trip to Zakopane, which is our ancestral home. Yes. And uh, he went there trying to find 
the home where our ancestors lived. And unfortunately, he did a lot of research. He went to City Hall and he spoke to people. And the house where our ancestors live is no longer standing. But he explained that the numbers of the house, they have old numbers of the house and new numbers of the houses there. And the old numbers started with one in the order in which they were built. Not on the street like we have now, but house number one was the first house built. Number 20 was the 20th house built. And most of the house, the older houses now have the old numbers on them, plus the new numbers, because they have new streets and all the streets have different numbers. Uh, the house where our ancestors were is no longer standing, but a house with a, a number, he found out which the house number was. And close to that number was another house, and he took some pictures, and I'll pass it around, which is representative of the house where our ancestors lived, which was very interesting. Um, Excuse me, what year approximately was the house lived in? Uh, okay, let's see. That's a good question. It was the 18, 1800s. Uh, it was the 1800s, I think. Um, uh, the house where our ancestors lived was house number 643. It is now gone. Uh, he was going to City Hall the next day, and let's see. This, this is a picture which is representative of the house where all the corn goods Joseph and Rivka and uh, she bore 13 children and, and 10 of them lived past infancy. And they had this big house, a house similar to this. What did they do? Were, were, were they, so they were, they were comfortable or what? I, we, I don't know exactly what they did. I don't know that. They had 13 kids. He was, and the town, the town today, and for many years, is is a ski resort. And the last pope, two popes ago, the one that is now a saint, Pope John Paul, the skier, the skier used to go back to he when he was Polish, went back to Zakopane to ski. It's a big ski resort, and uh, they have very nice markets and they sell cheese and things like that and so he said it was it was really quite interesting if anybody wants to go it would be very interesting for you to go and yes Jeff, did Ron tell you 643 what street? No, it was house number 642. Oh, 642. 642. He didn't say what street it was, but there weren't that many streets. It's a very small town. And the houses were numbered, as I said, in the order they were built, no matter what street they were on. Okay? Um, and that's about all I want to report on that. Um, also, I just want to, you know, I've been in touch with our cousin Colin Fontes, who was here last year with uh, Matthew Petros, and he wrote me a very nice email, which I think is representative of the feeling that we all have for the family, and I'd like to read it to you. He read, hey Jeff, unfortunately I can't make it to this year to the reunion. I wish I could, but work has me busy the first few weeks of the month. I will, of course, be there in spirit, and hope everyone has a good time. Please tell everyone that I love them and miss them and you. If you could tell everyone at the meeting that I love and miss them and everyone here in Oregon is doing well and we all wish we could be there, I would appreciate it. Um, and uh, that was about it. And I also got an email from, uh, from Matt who said he would have loved to come, but Stephen, his brother, is working as a coach for his old high school, assistant coach in soccer, and they made it to the finals. And tomorrow, Stephen, uh, Matt is taking pictures of Stephen's team, so they can't make it. I also had a phone call earlier this evening 
from uh, Herb Corngooth, who sends his love to everybody. How is he doing? He's doing okay. He's doing okay. Uh, we saw him in Florida several months ago, and he's uh, recovered pretty well from the stroke that he had. And he, he just felt that it was a little too overwhelming to come to be with the family at this time um, for him. But as I was talking to him on the phone, I told him next year is the 60th and I expect him to be here and he said he will be here. So God willing, he will be here too. And uh, what else? I think that's about it. I hope you're all having a good time and hope to see you all again soon and thank you very much. I just uh, we wanted to use this time to celebrate the the lovely moments of our year. It includes the new marriage of, uh, of David to Lisa, and we're excited about your marriage. It includes the imminent and the upcoming marriage of uh, Rick and Chris. And we're excited about that. That includes Zach's birthday tomorrow. Yeah! It includes the, uh, the very exciting retirement, uh, the, uh, the, the end of a uh, magnificent career in education. For and it includes Ro Roger's birthday. I'll probably toss the pass this uh, microphone around. It includes Roger's birthday is today. Is that right? Happy birthday. Go around. We do have people who've got loud enough voices to share some of those great moments that, uh, that we all want to kind of applaud and celebrate. Yep, Debbie. And Jessica's graduation from Jeff. Uh, mine and Jeff's uh, entry into senior citizenhood. This is in, Ingrid, Ingrid Taylor and James Taylor. They've got uh, two children, Ingrid. Benjamin and Gabriella, and they are in Texas. Yes, and, uh, and uh, Steve was at the party. Steve and I guess Peggy was not feeling well enough to come, but Steve is doing great. And it was a lovely, lovely graduation dinner. And I know that they had said that they would really love to be here, but pretty far away. So. Should I say something? Yeah, anything, anything else? So we have another hour planned for Simcast. People can share in the meeting. We've got another hour planned for the meeting. No, um, I think what? No, 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 no picture time this year, huh? Did anyone bring pictures? Do we, do we have photographs? We, we've got some photographs that Jeff has that he's going to share that Ronnie took. Um, this is not a bad time for me to say that. Um, I, Go to the mic. I'm so, proud, I'm so proud of my teacher voice. I should be. Yeah, you're in a big room. I, I think um, I think it's time for my retirement from the, uh, the presidency. Uh, Danny told me to say I want to spend more time with my family and kids. I think that's uh, my family. Um, but we've uh, I've spoken to the uh, really the, the person who's most likely to, to really succeed me. Ellen has agreed as the, being the vice president to be the person most likely to be successful to be the president. So she's kind of agreed to the appointment, and uh, and I think uh, with all of your permission as well, she'll succeed me as being a, a great president. Uh, uh, support. I'm, I was sharing with Alan, I was feeling like I was watching an uh, episode of Veep, where if anyone watches that, where she's, she's running for president and she kind of screws up in every way and she's feeling very hopeless and then all of a sudden she hears that the president is resigning so she because she's going to become president without actually 
having to do anything horrid. 